there's some administrator, classified administrators are in this number. You could get a report that said, not administrator classifieds, okay? And so this is what you're spending on classified people, and you can kind of see where you, where you sit there. Um, employee benefits. This is all employee benefits. This is um, not just health and welfare, it's STIRS, PERS, um, workers' comp, oh gosh, there's, there's several others. There are charts that break this out by health and welfare, but I only had two hours. So, but this again, this is all publicly available uh, data. And by the way, this is the data the state uses when they come in and help districts that are in trouble, okay? Books and supplies, you know, you're, you're right in the middle. Um, Orinda can spend a lot more money than you, and I'm guessing a lot of that's coming out of those local dollars where those big foundations with the parcel taxes are. Uh, Pittsburgh, they get a lot of more restricted money than you, that categorical money that's based on that high, free, and reduced uh, population there. So they get more money than you, so they can spend more money on this category. And um, Moraga is not that far behind you. But again, they have that big parcel tax. Yes? Uh, you mentioned that on this particular slide, a <coughs> books and supplies can include donations. On the previous slide, for classified and certificated salaries, does that include donations as well? You know, that's a good complex question that I need to answer and I need to think about real quick. So, so in general, uh, the, did you say classified? Go back or to the... Well, or uh, would, for whatever, example, salaries. Instructional assistance sometimes does. Uh, right. PAs and PFCs will fund a position. Right. Or they'll fund a technology person for the school sites. Is that donation included in this number? Okay. Or is this just general fund dollars? This is general fund dollars, which is which includes those donations. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay? I can't tell you a dollar. I could if I got into your book. I can't with the statewide numbers. So, so... When I, when I talk about Orenda or whatever district I was talking about, they're high on everything. Right. And so all that big, either parcel tax or foundation money, um, they're funding. Now, those local monies that they get, I mean, they do have restrictions, but they're, just, they're restrictions that you put on yourself. You have to think, what's, what's going to get the voters to approve this? If I say, I'm passing a parcel tax to give you know raises to all the administrators, how many votes you can get? Two. No. But if you say we're gonna, I'm thinking it up. We're gonna have elementary music, and we're gonna, do, we're gonna do all these wonderful things. The voters are more likely to vote for it. And so these do typically have restrictions, but they're restrictions that they put on themselves to get it to pass. So I know in Oakland, uh, they were very skilled in their parcel tax. It sounded wonderful, but it basically said they could do anything they wanted. But it was, I mean, it was very skillfully worded. You might call it a theory. So, not that you want to use those as a model, but, yeah. So, okay, so classified salaries, employee benefits, books and supplies. And so, yeah, back to your question, I think they're able to do that because they got a lot of that local money. They, in every category, Arenda is going to be able to spend more than others because of all that. Service and operating expenses. This one is all over the map. If I lined up five years, this ranking would change every year. Let me tell you what's in here. It's um, water, trash, electricity, auditors, attorneys, consultants. It's a broad category. And so I've seen districts where their number's off the charts because they had some big giant lawsuit. And the next year it goes down because they didn't have a big giant lawsuit. This is a very volatile area, okay? And so think of utilities in general and then professional services, okay? Um, you'll see in a special ed budget where this is a big, a big number because if you have a non-public school placement, um, usually you'll spend it out of that category because you have to place a special ed kid outside of the district. So, you know, it, this will vary. Okay, that's kind of how you spend your money. So let's talk.
talk about what I see in most school districts. Every school district in the state, not every, it isn't every, but almost all districts in the state are sitting on the biggest fund balance they've ever had in their history. And you say, how the heck did that happen? We just went, didn't you show me that chart of us being funded like that? Yes, I did. Every district in the state is sitting on a pretty huge fund balance. And I don't know what, by the way, I haven't really analyzed your budget, so I'm not, this is not a, my assessment of your budget, okay? But every district I'm aware of are sitting on big fund balance. Part of that, there's, there's three reasons why I think districts are sitting on big fund balance. One, um, the state of California keeps faking every district out. I'm gonna cut you, and then something happens and I don't. Think about this year, current year we're in. Just six months ago, you're probably thinking, I'm going to lose $441 a student. And I'm guessing your county probably made you have a plan for that. So every district in the state says, if, if Prop 30 doesn't pass, I'm going to get whacked. Okay? And I believe you planned for that whack, and so did everybody else. So what happens when you plan on losing? You know, so 441 how many kids do you have? About? Is that the exact number? 32,000, 32,000 times 441. That was your exposure. And that was your exposure through November, whether it's 6th or whatever, 4th, whatever the fourth election is. So you plan for the cut, it doesn't happen. Well, that happened this year. And, where, and if, if that doesn't happen, where does it go? It goes to your fund balance. We've had that for several years. In addition, we've been getting, I'm glad you asked that question, federal money. Um, we had two years during this crisis for um, millions of dollars in federal money. And so we've had a lot of things. So we have state issues and we have federal issues. And then we have cash issues. And I'll show you why. And that's why I think school districts are sitting. So I look back at these reports. You can get old reports. I just looked on average. Ending fund, unrestricted ending balances. This is a statewide number. have gone up 80% from 2007-8. To 10, 11, that's the last numbers I had. And this one yep. did have a purpose. Why did I pick 2007-8? That was the la that was the year, last year before this crisis started. Yes? I, we, I think, I don't, I don't want to offend anybody, but we have people that haven't necessarily sat through a lot of veggie presentations. Can you define fund balance? Huh? You're about to do that? I'm about to do that. There you go. Jeff. Thank you for that segue. <laughs> okay. Because I'm actually going to talk about your fund balance. I have it. So, uh, okay, Dan, this is, this is fun balance, balance words. Um, let's talk about fund balance really quick and, and, and why you do what you do. Um, back in 1991, Richmond went bankrupt. Richmond School District, it's probably an old story for all of you. They're now called West Contra Costa Unified School District. They have to change their name. And, um, and I was in Fresno at the same time. I was brand new, 1991, didn't do very much job search, that's why I went to work for a school district. <laughs> and, and we closed our books in Fresno, and we had a negative fund balance of like 1%. And Richmond closed their books that year too. And they had a negative balance of about the same amount. And the state took over Richmond, and they didn't take over us. The difference between us and Richmond, we had cash, we had a bond that we could borrow cash and our pay paychecks were cash. In Richmond, their paychecks were cash, they didn't have any money. And so the state took them over. So what does the state usually do when something bad happens, they react accordingly. And so because of Richmond, prior to that, there were no minimum fund balances. You didn't have to do multi-year projections. Thank your neighbors, West Contra Costa. Because of them, you have to do first interim reports and second interim reports. Because of them, you have to do multi-year projections. And because of that, you have to have a minimum reserve for economic uncertainties. And so those are set by the state, and they range depending on the size of the district. So giant districts like LA, they're only required to have 1%. Um, little teeny-weeny districts can have like 